Welcome back to Senior Savvy Cannabis. I'm Catherine Goldberg. Today, we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to teach you how to read a cannabis COA. We've talked extensively about how frustrating it is to go to the dispensary, purchase your favorite sativa, only to find it be really sedating. We've talked about all the reasons that is. You can watch the previous videos if you're curious, but I'm about solutions. So I'm going to show you three different COAs and we're going to go through them and I'm they're all from different sativas, but I'm going to explain based on the different cannabinoids and terpenes, how the effects are different so that next time you want to go and pick out a sativa that's energizing or good for pain or happy, but not too energizing, you feel more confident in doing that. Before we get started, just to get into some housekeeping, I want to say congratulations to James Baker, who is the winner of our Revelry giveaway. Uh, he is winning this smell proof kit to carry his cannabis in. Uh, we will do a giveaway every month with different brands. Follow the blog for details. So normally I just talk to you guys and it's fabulous. Today, what we're gonna do is something a little bit different. I'm gonna share my screen with you and then we're gonna look together at the COAs. So the COAs that I'm gonna we're gonna be working with are for raw garden for their sauce. I like the sauce a lot. Sauce is fresh frozen cannabis flour. So the cannabis is grown, but it's not dried or cured. It's flash frozen. Um, that keeps a lot of the terpenes intact. So when you're buying cannabis flour for joints or whatever, you're getting maybe like one to 4% terps, which is, it's low, but it is what it is. Um, with these sauce cartridge, cartridges, this is 10% terps. I am much more interested in the effects-based terpenes than I am in just THC percentage. And of course, it's going to be terpenes and cannabinoids plus your own internal biology that's going to determine your high. So let's jump into this. Um, okay, so we're going to share my screen. Okay, let's see. Can everyone see this? Okay, great. So I picked this one up while I was traveling because I needed something um, odor free and discreet. And first of all, this has 10% terpenes. It's delicious. It is fabulous. I was like, oh my God, wait, what weed is this flavorful? Um, the second thing that I noticed, oh, okay. You can see my screen. Can you see me? I guess we'll figure it out. So, okay. So this is what we're going to look at. So by the way, all legal products will come with a QR code that you can scan and it should take you to the lab results. If you cannot find the lab results easily, that is not a good sign for the brand. I would suggest contacting the brand directly. And if they're weird about it, pass on it. So anyway, okay. So this strawberry Jack that I think is like my favorite thing that I've smoked in many years. So first of all, cannabinoids. THC. We're only at 72%. Yes, that's high, but other carts are like 90% THC. So the fact that there's so much less THC allows more room for the other fabulous things in cannabis, like minor cannabinoids and terpenes. Okay. So first, what I look at is the terpenes. Um, what is most profound about this strawberry jack is that terpinoline is most abundant. If you are like me and you're always looking for a really racy sativa, you'll be in heaven because that's exactly what this is. Um, we've discussed in previous episodes, the neuroscience of terpenes and how they modulate um, neurotransmitters to create certain effects. So when people say that terpinoline is really like energizing and racy and clear headed, it's because it modulates neuroepinephrine and dopamine. Okay, cool. So that's a good sign. Then the second dominant terpene, but less is myrcene. That's going to kind of balance it out because myrcene is acting on GABA, which is the nervous system's breaking system. So it's going to be sedating, but the fact that there's more terpinoline than myrcene 
tells me that it's going to be a good start. Then let's look at the two other cannabinoids or terpenes, and we'll kind of get a sense from there. So beta carophylline uh, and lemonine are next. So beta carophylline, as we've discussed, um, doesn't actually modulate neurotransmitters, but it works on the CB2 receptor, which has to do with um, the immune system and inflammation. So if you're looking for a daytime sativa that is energizing and could be good for pain, this could be a good option. Um, so beta carophylline is neither energizing nor sedative. Uh, it kind of works in a slightly different way. Then there's lemonine. And lemonine um, allows more serotonin and dopamine to exist at the same time without it being um, like sucked back up into the neurons. So a sativa that's high in lemonine um, is going to be more of like a happy, content, feel good sativa. It's not going to be as racy as a terpinoline sativa, but it's going to be uplifting. Um, so that gives me a sense of the terpene profile for this strawberry jack. Then I'm going to go and take a look at the cannabinoid profile. And what I see here is that there's very little THCV. Um, there is, is there anything good in here? There is. Okay. So this is where it gets fun. So if you'll notice, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but whatever. Um, there's actually a lot of CBG in this cartridge. CBG is great for stomach issues and focus. And that's exactly what I found since I've been using this one. Um, I just get a ton of work done. I feel fabulous. I have no stomach issues. It's easy to eat. Um, there's no, there's a little humulene in it, which does reduce appetite, but I didn't notice that. Um, so I was like pretty thrilled with this strawberry Jack. I actually bought up all of the ones my dispensary had because it was 40% off on Mondays. And this is my new favorite thing. So let's look at two other sativas um, that have different chemotypes. Uh, chemotypes are like the chemistry of the plant, not just what's in the label. Um, so, okay, cool. So now let's look at this one. So this is a green crack. This is another sativa sativa that's pretty energizing, pretty, I'm not going to say racy, but I like green crack. I've enjoyed it in the past. So I was excited when I saw it in this high terpene form. So again, there's 9.7% terps. Fantastic. Uh, the THC is only at 69%. So it's a little bit less. Um, it might not be as psychoactive as the strawberry jack. It might be a better place to start for a lot of people, especially for a daytime high. Um, and then let's take a look at the terpene profile and then the cannabinoids, and then we can make sense of it. So, okay. So for this um, green crack, um, and I'll tell you why I passed on it and bought the strawberry jack instead. So the main terpenes are beta carophylline, limonene, and humulene. Okay. Limonene, as we've discussed, modulates serotonin and dopamine. It is uplifting. Um, but beta carophylline and humulene are neither uplifting, but they are great for pain, especially for inflammation. Um, so even though it's not my number one choice for a cart for a sativa cartridge because it doesn't, because it's not high in terpinoline, mm -hmm. um, it still could be a good choice for someone else. Um, the fact that linalol is also the fourth most prominent terpene, linalol um, also like myrcene enhances GABA and linalol um, basically acts on like our learning system in the brain. We need cer certain neurotransmitters to be able to create memories and linalol um, reduces those neurotransmitters. So if you are like me and you use cannabis when you want to learn or study or read or remember, this green crack might not be the best for you, or it might be because everyone's biology is different. So 
that's why I passed on it. But let's take a look at the cannabinoids and see if we can learn anything else. Okay. So what is pretty cool about this is that it is high in THCV. I like THCV. I've made a whole episode on THCV. THCV is known as like diet weed because it suppresses appetite and makes you like energetic. And it's often found in land race sativa strains. Um, I like THCV. Um, what else does this have in it? That's kind of interesting. CBC. Um, I learned about CBC recently. It's, it's like for mood. It's like uplifting for mood. Um, and then what we also have here is another high in CBG. So again, CBG is good for focus and for stomach issues. Um, so it's absolutely a sativa. It is energizing, but it's not as energizing as the strawberry Jack as we've seen. So I think that's pretty interesting. Um, did I miss anything? No. Okay, cool. Let's go on to our third COA, which is another sativa, and we can compare all three of them. So this one, I like literally was like, wait, am I reading this right? Does this sour diesel have 24% terpenes? That's amazing. Um, I like, ter I like, I, we have put way too much stock in THC content. And I think a lot of us have realized that doesn't serve us. And the fact that the THC content on this sour lemon sour diesel is only at 64%. And then we have 24% terpenes. This is great. Um, it doesn't tell me necessarily about how energizing it's going to be, but it tells me that it may not be too sedating because the THC isn't too high. So let's once again, Take a look at the terpene profiles. Okay. Oh, I remember why I didn't buy this one. Okay. So lemon sour diesel. Um, what we have. So the, okay. So I feel like this is sort of like a more balanced sativa. So we have as the two dominant terpenes, we have beta carophylline and myrcene. That's going to be sedative. Um, I am very sensitive to myrcene. Uh, my nervous system, like even if there's a bit of mercine, I tend to feel pretty lethargic, um, which I realize is why most people use cannabis, but you guys are probably into smoking sativas, so you get it. Um, however, the two secondary dominant terpenes are limonene and pinene. That's pretty cool. Those are energizing terpenes. Those are usually associated with sativas. And unlike linalool, which um, which like interrupts lear like learning and making new memories, pinene uh, acts on acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter that's required for making memories. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily assume that this lemon sour diesel would be sedating, but I would prefer, again, a strain that has terpinoline as the first option. Um, it's also got some humulene in there, which again is good for um, inflammation and also good for like uh, reducing appetite for a lot of people. Um, so again, like there's a spectrum of sativas and these all fall on different parts of the spectrum. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at the minor cannabinoids and then we can go from there. Um, okay, what do we see? We're high in THCV. Okay, that's gonna tell me that it's energizing and it may reduce my appetite. We got a little bit of CBC, probably won't notice too much of that to be honest. And then we got some CBG, which again is going to be good for stomach issues and focus. So depending on how you want to feel, um, these are three really good options. Um, I was just really impressed when I tried this over the summer because it was the first time I had smoked anything that I was like, oh my God, this is energizing. I'm going to go work out. Um, I really like that the THC content isn't as high as many of the other vapes. And I really love that 
the terpene contents between like 10 and 24%. That's fantastic. Um, so I've been really happy with, with raw garden sauce. Um, and I'm sure everyone likes different kinds of cannabis. Each have their value and merit, whatever. Um, but this is how I make decisions when I shop at the dispensary or when people contact me through Savvy Relief and are like, hey, I'm looking for a daytime sativa that's not going to be sedating, but that's going to help with my pain. This is what I'm looking at to go give them recommendations. And even though it's not perfect and we can talk about how there have been issues with lab testing and reporting accurate COAs, this is the best place we have to start. Um, and it served me well, to be perfectly honest. So I hope this makes sense. Um, I think it's a really fun way to be able to tailor and customize your cannabis experience based on how you want to feel. And it really highlights that it's not only THC, it's terpenes and minor cannabinoids, and of course your personal biology, that's going to influence the high. Um, I will end on one last note. Since it's sort of hard to remember all of this stuff, especially like when you're smoking, I I was not satisfied with any of the cannabis tracking journals out there. They were all like expensive and like had all this information I didn't need. So I made a one pager that you can print out for free and you put in the product and then you can list like the terpenes and minor cannabinoids and how it made you feel. And there's like a rating scale to see if it's helping. Um, it's free on my blog. I'm going to put a link to it. Um, but yeah, so tell me how you make your cannabis buying decisions for those of you who are also shopping at legal dispensaries. Are you looking at the COAs? Are you trusting the bud tenders and then like being really disappointed when you get home? Because that used to happen to me a lot. Um, I think this is a better way to do it. And again, if the brand is weird about showing you the COA, it's not a brand that you want to, you want to use. Um, so good job, Raw Garden. I know they've been around for a really long time and I'm really genuinely impressed. So I hope this was a fun podcast and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.